Donald Duck is usually seen in a pretty foul mood. Foul, foul mood. Okay, yeah, that was terrible, but just bear with me. Some people may think he's just angry all the time, but he's really not. Donald actually has a pretty upbeat outlook on life. That is, until something comes along to ruin it. However, his short fuse is what people know him for, which makes sense since he was created to balance out that goody two-shoes mouse, Mickey. In fact, Donald is kind of a shield for Mickey. He does all the grimy, violent things that Disney won't allow Mickey to take part in. Oh, hmm, kind of like how I do all the research nobody else here wants to do straight from the desk of Death Battle. Although, unlike Donald, I was never in the army. That's right, folks, Donald Fauntleroy Duck, what a middle name, right? Joined the military, which probably gave him a whole host of issues. At the beginning of World War II, with the government investing heavily into propaganda, of course they asked resident magic maker Walt Disney to join the party. But honestly, there's got to be a better way to inspire the youths of America to join the service, because some of this stuff is seriously freaky. The six-episode series starts heartwarmingly enough. Donald decides to join the army in hopes of becoming a pilot. Which, okay, first off, the army? Really? Why is he not joining the navy? I mean, he already wears a sailor outfit. I guess the government thought an amphibious bird in an amphibious car wouldn't be as entertaining as a bird trying to be a pilot. Anyway, the poor duck gets poked and prodded by a faceless group of army doctors, and soon enough, Donald is marched into the ground by army life, partially through literal marching. Because this is supposed to be a teaching moment for the kids, Donald decides to blow off some steam by going AWOL! Until he gets caught by Sergeant Pete and falls into a hole that perfectly fits his duck-sized behind, which makes Donald and Pete think that Donald's lost his legs! You know, Lieutenant Dand. Well, you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. What happens next is where things get real dark. Donald is so distraught that he takes Pete's pistol and threatens to kill himself. My God, look at his face. Kids saw this. And how does Pete respond? He tells him to do it over there behind the bushes. What you, what? In what scenario is a superior officer endorsing this? Uh, I think we took a wrong turn somewhere and went from Disney to Tarantino. I'm sorry, wasn't this supposed to be pro-army propaganda? Oh, to be a fly on the wall of that storyboarding session. Right after almost, you know, killing himself, Donald is sent out on a solo mission behind enemy lines. Yeah, because sending a mentally compromised soldier out on an important mission without getting him help is really just the best idea in the world. Yeah, do that. This episode shows not only a host of awful Japanese caricatures, but also Donald destroying an entire Japanese military base. So keep in mind the next time you look into Donald's eyes, remember, He's taken countless human lives. Donald's awful experiences in the military probably contributed to just how bad his temper is nowadays. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say the ducks likely got some PTSD from his time in the service. Let me give you an example. Before the war, in a comic strip called Familiar Profile, Donald sets up a trap for whoever has been raiding his fridge. <sighs> Only to find out it was himself sleepwalking. What a wacky misunderstanding. After the war, in a 1945 comic issue, he found himself in the exact same situation. Only this time, Donald immediately blames his nephews, and when he's interrupted in the middle of his sleepwalking, thanks to some strategically placed firecrackers, he thinks he's back in the war! Donald chases after his nephews with a curtain rod for a bayonet and calls them all sorts of racial slurs. And his nephews... <laughs> Just laugh it off. It was a different time. A very, very different time. Like, oh, hey, kids. How about getting your dear old uncle some help? You selfish little pricks. Oh, fun fact. 
After the war, soldier Donald was never really seen again, not even to get discharged. Which meant by the time Donald's 50th birthday rolled around, he had spent 43 years on active duty. Luckily for Donald, he was honorably discharged on May 19, 1984. He even got promoted to Buck Sergeant. We thank you for your service, Buck Sergeant Duck.